dear students assalamu alaikum i am here mohammad jamal khan lecturer in botany university of education lahore today we will discuss a topic that is the extension of our previous lecture number 4 and lecture number 5 extension so in this lecture number 6 we discuss the morphological characters of plant related to inflorescence and fruit firstly we discuss the morphological character of inflorescence and after that we discuss the morphological character of fruit so let's we start so now here we begin with the morphological character of inflorescence Uh, basically uh, the flowers are uh, arranged in some uh, definite uh, manner on the plant uh, in each species of uh, flowering plant so the mode of arrangement or the pattern of arrangement of flower on a specialized uh, branch at tip of the plant which bears uh, flower so uh, that group of flower is called as inflorescence so the stalk of inflorescence is called the peduncle so depending upon the arrangement of flower we uh, classify the inflorescence into two forms uh, one is racemose inflorescence and the other one is uh, you can say the cymose inflorescence so and uh, the racemose is a simple in which the tip of axis continues to grow and flower produce laterally while uh, in cymose the tip of main axis terminates into a flower and axis growth uh, stop after the development of flower and the lateral branches bear flowers so branches also terminate uh, into a uh, flower and in the end we have a special type of inflorescence that we discuss later in this lecture so here i put number of uh, pictures that show different inflorescence so students most of the things i will explain verbally so you must be very conscious in listening so here we have types of inflorescence we have three types of inflorescence so here i have three types of inflorescence number 1 is simple number 2 is compound inflorescence and number 3 is mixed inflorescence or it is also called as special inflorescence so first of all we discuss a simple inflorescence this one so simple inflorescence according to definition is a inflorescence in which the branching of main axis or peduncle is may be racemose or may be cymose is called simple inflorescence for your illustration with reference to racemose or cymose we discuss under these these two terms under 
a simple and fluorescence. So here I must clarify you that the term uh, racemose and the cymose is the type of simple inflorescence. So now here we go for a racemose inflorescence. Now for your illustration, uh, I draw a inflorescence this this inflorescence here this one so here i draw this fluorescence for your illustration this all fluorescence so this inflorescence according to the definition of uh, racemos uh, indefinite inflorescence because its peduncle shows continued growth for an indefinite period. This is possible because the peduncle has an active terminal part. So here I show you a red triangle, this one. It is a terminal bud. And this one, this one is a main axis of inflorescence. From this main axis, these flowers originate. These are the flowers. These are the flowers that originate from this main axis. So here, the fluorescence axis, this one, this fluorescence axis never terminates in flower. So the terminal bird never converted itself into a flower though so the apical bird this bird this one or this one of the peduncle is never converted into a terminal flower these are peduncles these are the peduncles on which flower established these are the peduncles so the flowers are arranged in acro petal succession. The older flower, these, these older flower, these older flower present in lower side, while the upper or younger flower, younger flower present on upper side here. Okay, got my point? Or the younger flower near to apex or close to terminal bud. Similarly, these flower or the order of opening of flower in racemose and fluorescence is centripetal. It means the older flower, these older flower open earlier while the jungle, younger flower open later. These are the jungle flower. The, they are open later in their life cycle. So here we have the extension of uh, racemose inflorescence or one can, can say that we are, the, are the various forms of racemose inflorescence. Here we have, have a spike, then we have a racine, corium, amble, then we have a cyme. These are the various forms or extensions of racemose in fluorescence and in the last we have the composite so here we have further divided in uh, racemose in fluorescence into further types so one by one we discuss all these types first of all we have a racemose in fluorescence that is called a racine this one this is racine so in this this in this uh, type of uh, racemos we have a elongated main axis 
this one elongated main axis and bears lateral flowers these this is the these are the pedicels these are the pedicels so the main elongated axis this one bears flower that have pedicel or they are co also called as pedicellate flowers these also called as pedicellate flowers this simply we call it as raceme so the next is compound raceme this one compound raceme here we also have a elongated axis this one elongated axis but in addition to this we have lateral branches here we have lateral branches this is these are the lateral branches and each lateral branch or each lateral branch have a elongated axis and on these lateral axis we have a flower with peduncle so this is these are the flowers these are the flowers so when the main axis or elongated axis bear further lateral axis and each lateral axis bear flower with pedicel so we call it as compound raceme so next the simogeny fluorescence is spike here this one in this case we have a elongated main axis or peduncle the elongated main axis bear flowers but these flowers are without any pedicel so those flower that doesn't possess any pedicel they are called as sessile so the elongated axis bear sessile flower we called it as spike so the next is catkin here in this type the main axis or peduncle is long like this this is the peduncle unbranched and pendulous which produce sessile flowers i already told you what is sessile flowers and these flowers are majorly unisexual either male or either female so it's mean male and female flower are separate in addition to this in some books the definition of catkin is given as the spike with unisexual flower is called catkin so next racemos in fluorescence is spadex in this case the main axis become thick or the peduncle become thick and fleshy here you observe this this is the main act peduncle which produce sessile flower here we have a here we have a flowers without stock uh, without stock or without any pedicel so when the main axis is fleshy or thick 
and bear unisexual flower and those flower are sessile in nature in this the male flower are smaller in size and female flower are larger the male flower are born on upper sides here and the female one are born on below here so the whole fluorescence is surrounded by a number of large bracts that we call as sepathy and bract is a form of smaller leaf and this bract or sepathy perform the function of protection of flower so the next we have umbel in this case the main axis is shortened at its tips here and from this tip a number of flowers is produced as you observed here a number of flowers is producing from this tip so all flower possesses pedicel these are pedicels these all are pedicels so they are pedicellate flowers but their stalk of all flowers more or less equal and uh, equal in size and length so they are seem to arise at a common point from this this is the common point from th this point all flower arised in this fluorescence the jungle flower towards center these two are the jungle flowers and the older one are present towards periphery so these two flowers and these two flowers are older one so in the center these are younger flowers and in the in the periphery these are older flowers so next we have compound ambel in this case the main axis is further divided into branches this one this is the branches this is the branches this one is also a branch so the main axis divided into branches and each branch produce flower same as in case of umbel in which all flower originate from a common point and their size and length are equal younger flower are present in the center and the old, older flower are present in the periphery so this one is compound umbel next one is corium so in this racemos inflorescence the main axis or peduncle is comparatively short till here it produce lateral flowers these are the lateral flowers these are the lateral flowers these are the lateral flowers similarly these are the lateral flowers so it produce lateral flowers which are all have stalked or pedicel this this is a stalk so the lower flower like this flower this flower have much longer stalk than those the upper one 
this one the upper one they have short stalk so that all flowers these all flowers come to lie at uh, about the same level or same point so this refer to as corium so the next we have a head in this case the main axis is reduced to a the main axis reduced to a circular disc and this circular disc this one bears sessile leaf so such type of racemogenic fluorescence we called it as head the next one is capitulum this one so in this case the main axis is reduced to a flat convex this one is the main axis convert into a flat convex disc like structure that is called as receptacle this one is a receptacle and the receptacle bears small sessile leaves these are the leaves these are the leaves and oh uh, sorry receptacle bears flower small sessile flowers these are the flowers and these flower we call it as florets florets f l o r e t s florets on its upper surface so the outer flower are older one and open earlier than inner one actually the capitulum possesses two types of flower one is ray florets the other one is disc florets the ray florets are present around margins here here which are arranged around the central this one the central disc and they are strap shaped while the disc floret are present in the center here and form a disc like structure so they are tubular and bisexual so this receptacle this receptacle is surrounded by a number of bracts these are the bracts so bracts are present at the base of receptacle and these are called as in volucre so here in this slide there is a brief uh, description of each and every uh, type of uh, racemogen fluorescence here we have raceme peduncle has bisexual and pedicellate flower arranged as acropetalary i already told you all these term in previous slide one by one then we have a spike peduncle has bisexual and sessile flowers then we have a spikelets so here uh, i i didn't explain you the spikelet so i explain here so here in uh, spikelets two to many small uh, spikes are arranged on the main axis here i draw the main axis this one is main axis or peduncle forming a uh, spikelets so these all are these small all are uh, spikelets these are spikelets these are sm spikelets so the each axis of spikelets 
here I mentioned this is the main axis of spikelets here I mentioned it is very short and it bears sessile flowers these sessile flowers are called as Rachila at the base of entire fluorescence here I indicated in uh, uh, red uh, color these two one this and the other one is these these two are small bracts that are called as gluons so these are glooms so these bracts that are present in at the base of main axis these are called gloom in addition to this each spikelet this one here in this case each spikelet also possesses a bract or at its base and these bracts here this one and this one these bracts that by uh, being by spikelets or uh, sessile flower these are called as one is called lima and the other one is called as and the second bract is called as pili here i mentioned this one is p not r pili p a l a e okay so after this we have a catkin i already told you in previous slide it is a pendulous spike in leaf axis which bear unisexual flower uh, and you shown the figure of catkin in previous slide so again we have the uh, brief description of our previous uh, figures that we already uh, discussed uh, in this lecture spadex it is a spike with fleshy axis and having both male and female uh, female flowers so it is surrounded by a large color bracts called spathe already told you and the next is corium the main axis is short lower flower have long pedicels than upper ones so that all flowers are brought more or less to the same level already we discuss it again we have umbel the main axis is reduced very much and all flowers appear to be arising from the same point and the next one is and the last of this uh, racemogen inflorescence is capitulum or head in here the main axis become flat and called a septicel so it bears many sessile and small florets peripheral florets called ray florets are pistillate or neuter or zygomorphic so whereas the disc florets are bisexual and actinomorphic so we already uh, discussed these terms in our previous slide where the figures of each term is present so again we have a, a diagram of uh, uh, racemogen inflorescence here we have a raceme corium corium both raceme umbel spike so for your illustration i again added a figure of all those uh, previous types of uh, racemogen inflorescence here so now here we have an other type of Simo uh, of uh, inflorescence, simplorescence, inflorescence that is cymose inflorescence. So, in this uh, inflorescence, the main axis soon ends in a flower. So, it gives one or more two lateral branches or lateral axes, if of each of which ends in flower. So this process repeated several times. So for your illustration, here we have a main axis. This one is a main axis that is ended with the terminal flower, and below the below the tip of this main axis, lateral branches arising arised and the lateral axis is also ended with a terminal flower 
below this terminal flower further little branches originate and each branch again ended at a terminal flower so the inflorescence has a limited growth and this is because the terminal bud this one this one of peduncle is converted into a flower so below this apical bud so below this apical bud here one or more lateral branches may develop on the peduncle and these branches terminate into flower so here this branch these are the lateral branches and each branch terminate into a flower so thus flower in uh, cymose inflorescence is arranged into a basic petal succession so the first form or the oldest flower is at terminal and the youngest flower these these are the oldest flower these are the oldest flower and the youngest flower produce later or lower down in position on peduncle and these are the younger flowers these are the that produce later so it's mean the opening of flower is centrifugal the central or terminal flower so the central these flower these flower so the central flower opens first while the peripheral flowers these flowers or these flowers are younger and open later so here we have three types of uh, cymose inflorescence one is a uniparous uniparous is further divided into two forms we later discuss it uh, the second one is this one is number one the second one is biparous this one and the third one is multiparous so we have three types of simo so firstly i uh, give you the brief description of uniparous only in this type only one lateral branch this one is a lateral branch here i tell this one is a lateral branch this one is a lateral branch uh, arises from the main axis this one is a main axis when this lateral branch arises after the formation of terminal flower this flower the lateral branch again produce this branch again produce only one branch at a time like primary one similar like from this lateral branch another lateral branch originate this one and this is produced after the formation of this flower of lateral branch so this procedure continuously this is a, this procedure it continue going on so further lateral branches is, are produced by lateral axis or lateral branches so we have two types of uniparous this is all about uniparous 
symbols in fluorescence. So in uniparous we have further two types. One is uniparous helicoid, the other one is uniparous scorpioid. So first we discuss about helicoid. So in helicoid case, when the lateral branches, these branches, the So when the lateral branches that is drawn in by a blue color here arise in a successive um, manner so that same size either on left side or either on right side but only in one direction and here all the branches are produced in left side left side left side so in this case by the region of these later branches towards left side it produce a curve this is a curve so this curve actually uh, look uh, appear like a helix structure so in this pattern when we attain a fluorescent uh, in fluorescence symbols in fluorescent it we called as uniparous helicoid the next one is scorpioid in this case in this case the lateral branches develop in an alternate manner or forming a zigzag. One is on left side, the other one is on right side. That again the le on left side, then the other one is on right side. So in this alternate pattern or a zigzag pattern, when we obtain an inflorescence or we attain a uniparous cymose in fluorescence then we call it as uniparous scorpioid the next one is biparous cymose in fluorescence in this the main axis ends in a terminal flower and at the same time the two lateral branches arise from it so these are the two lateral branches and each branch lateral branch also ends on a flower and at the same time two lateral branches again two lateral branches are arise from this lateral branch here and here we repeat the same procedure as in main axis so in this type of uh, biparous Symos in fluorescence we have a main axis that ends with the terminal flower at the same time below this terminal flower two later branches arise and each branch also end on terminal flower and below this terminal flower again later branches produced and these branches also ends up with a terminal flower so this pattern we call it as by Paris Simos in fluorescence. The next one is a multi Paris or multi Paris Simos in fluorescence. So in this case, main axis ended in a terminal flower. This is a terminal flower. This one is a terminal flower. And more than two later branches arise from the main axis at the same time just below the flower so from this flower two or more branches originate these are the branches that originate just below 
this flower this is the flower here this is the terminal flower and from this terminal flower below this terminal flower two or more later branches originate and the same pattern is repeated in terminal branches so this pattern we call it as multiparous cymose inflorescence so here we have another type of inflorescence and that we call as compound inflorescence so uh, this inflorescence in which uh, main axis is branched and bear flowers in the same manner as they are in uh, as you already uh, discuss in previous in this lecture in simple raceme or in spikes or spikelets or in umbel so here we discuss the group of racemes and group of spikes or spikelets or group of umbels so when they are arranged racemes arranged in a group form then we call it as compound raceme and when uh, we say uh, when spikes or spikelets are arranged in group form then we call it as compound spike or compound spike of spikelets similarly in the uh, same manner when we discuss uh, umbels in group then we call it as compound umbel so in compound raceme or racemes of racemes uh, the main axis is uh, racemosely branched and branches develop uh, pedicellate uh, flower in a racemose manner then we call it as racemes of racemes or compound racemes the second one uh, is a compound spike or spike of spikelets in this case the main axis of the inflorescence uh, bear small lateral spikes or spikelets as you observe in case of wheat and the third one is compound umbel or umbels of umbel in uh, this case the basically uh, umbel branched umbel is called compound umbel and the branches arise uh, from the main axis uh, form primary umbel and the flower arises from each branch from secondary umber or partial umber. So bracts may be uh, arise from, uh, may be present at the base of each uh, umber. So if bracts are present at the base of each uh, secondary umber, these are called as invocular. And we observed uh, such type of uh, compound inflorescence in coriander and carrot. So here we have a corium. When corium process branched structure, then we call it as compound corium. Seen them immediately when spadex bear uh, branched or the main the branched main axis of spax is called as compound spadex. And similarly, uh, in case of uh, capitulum, each capitulum consists of secondary capitulum. Then we call it as a compound capitulum. Here we have a uh, figure uh, that clearly indicate here we have a simple raceme but when this raceme possesses branches here these branches then it convert uh, convert into a compound raceme similarly in case of cori uh, simple corium and when this simple corium further uh, classify into branching structure here 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 so corium processes branch structure we call it as compound corium and similarly in case of simple umbel when umbel further processes branch structure then we call it as compound umbel 
So here in mixed inflorescence, uh, in which both racemos and cymos branching occur, so such type of uh, inflorescence is called as mixed inflorescence. So it has further divided into various uh, types. First of all, panicle of spikelets. So in this case, spikelets are arranged on the panicle branch. Uh, secondly, we have racemes of uh, cymes. In this case, the paired secondary axis, the paired secondary axis start as biparous, but later it becomes uniparous, which develop worlds of sessile flower so the next is racime of capitula in this case the main axis is branched in racimose manner and each branch terminates in a capitula so here we have the mixed inflorescence in this fluorescence both racimose and cymose branching occur so we call it as mixed inflorescence and the mixed inflorescence is further categorized into various uh, types first of all the panicle of spikelets in this case spikelets are present or arranged on a panicle branch the second one is the racime of cymes in this case the paired secondary axis uh, start as a biparous but later it becomes uniparous which develop worlds of sessile flower forming a specific structure that we call as what is the so we discuss later in uh, this lecture next is the seam of capitula so in this case the main axis uh, is branched in a racemose manner and each branch terminate as in a capitula so the next one is compound umbel of scythia in this case scythia are arranged in umbellate manner and in the last we have panicle of short cymes so it is very dense and regular in shape it is also called as thyrsus so next we talk about uh, mixed structure or mixed uh, inflorescence uh, and these are the figures of uh, various mixed inflorescence as we discussed in previous uh, slide in this lecture so here uh, we have the last type of inflorescence that is special type of some cymose inflorescence so these are the special inflorescence and in this the daughter axes are uh, suppressed so the flowers are crowded together in several uh, groups so it is uh, difficult to determine the type of inflorescence in uh, them therefore they are called as special inflorescence and the following are, have uh, three types of special uh, inflorescence one is uh, uh, verticillester and the other one is cyathium and the third one is ambulate cymose hat so first of all we discuss about uh, verticillester in this case the bracts in the floral region are opposite. Each bract has a cluster of sessile flower in its axis, and the two cluster at a node form whirl like arrangement. So, this arrangement is called as verticillester. The cluster of flowers is basically biparasine at first, and suppression of one or two branches occur in it so it later it becomes uniparous the other type is scythian uh, in this case it look like a single flower but in reality it is an inflorescence uh, many axes are reduced in it complete suppression of sepals and petals occur in flower and the main axis and in central reduce female flower so it is surrounded by a cup shaped uh, covering that we call as in volcar so scorpoid cymos cluster of male flowers sound the female flower and the female flower ripens first then male so this order of development is called 
is like uh, sim uh, similar to cymose cluster and the last one is amblyte cymose hat so in this case along leaf less stalk or scap arises in the mid of the radical leaves this cap bears cluster of flowers at its upper end so these flower appear to form umbel but in reality they form helicoid cymose cluster therefore such type of inflorescence is called as umblate cymose hat so here we have different figures uh, of uh, special inflorescence so here we have the example in vertis lister we have osimum and salvia in cyathium we have the example of euphorbia pulcherima and in high uh, umbilates hamos head it is also called as hypanthodium we have the example of ficus So this is all about for uh, today's lecture. May you get very informative information related to uh, morphological character of inflorescence. So stay safe, stay healthy. So here we have the references that we. Uh, used from different sources in the making of this lecture.